All right, so welcome to opening Rhino for the first time. I'm really excited you're using Rhino. This is a great software that you're gonna get a lot out of. And I hope through this series of videos that you really learn how to take advantage of all the tools and techniques and things that Rhino has to offer. So without further ado, if you haven't seen already, here's the website where you can either download a trial version, change your email address, or buy the student if you're a student or this um, commercial license. They're not too strict about the student, so I would at least try, even if you're not officially a student, I would at least try this first. You might be a student of something and at least try. And then if not, then you would have to have uh, the commercial license or for now just have a free trial. So welcome to Opening Rhino for the first time. This is really for everyone and it doesn't matter if you're using Rhino 6 or Rhino 7. For this tutorial, we will be using Rhino 7. So I'll double click and open that up. I'll hit this panel here, new, and then just do large objects. Let's just do feet and inches. That's a good, good thing to work on. And let's make this a little bit smaller. So you'll see here, this is the interface. When you first see Rhino, it has four different perspectives. And when you click in one of those perspectives, they are separate views and they are activated separately. So you can't draw in all of the views at once. You can only draw in one view at a time. So, and then another thing to keep in mind is that at any point you can change how these views are displayed. I would highly recommend keeping this four view, uh, these four different views for at least try to get used to it uh, because later on you'll really start to see the advantages if you don't, if you don't want to, and and you just want to work in perspective or the top view, which is completely fine, or if there's times where you just want to enlarge the whole screen, what you can do is double click this perspective button, and then the whole uh, view is displayed. And how I'm zooming in and out is with the scroll wheel. And if you are in the perspective view, uh, it, unlike SketchUp, which you use the scroll wheel to orbit. I would use the right click and drag to orbit in uh, Rhino. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can change the different ways things are displayed up on this uh, arrow here. So just keep that in mind while you're modeling. Things might not be showing up how they are in my screen. Just check to make sure that you're in the shaded view. Another thing I would like to point out is all your tools, your basic modeling tools are here on the left. If they're not, displaying, you can come up to panels and get that to display correctly. And just make sure you have properties and layers also uh, that those are selected and are, and are activated. So before we get started, uh, you would it's good to just take a look down here and you wanna make sure that you have OSNAP selected and then each one of these check marked items that I have here, so end, near, point, mid, and uh, inter, intersection have those selected. The O snaps are really important and we'll get into those in just a second. And then also the smart check, make sure you have that selected. And I like to have the gumball open and you can also have planar selected if you'd like. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the line work and how that works. Unlike SketchUp, uh, Rhino uses NURBS curves and surfaces, which is a mathematical model that will show the curve accurately. For instance, in SketchUp, you'll see a series of line segments. In Rhino, it will be a true curve. So you don't need to select any the amount of sides because it will be a true curve, which is a really nice thing to have. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw a rectangle now, if you want to start off as the reference point uh, in the middle of, of the grid, you can type zero comma zero, and that will place your rectangle uh, right at zero zero. And then you can type in dimensions. So I could do 12 inches space by 12 inches space. And then I would have a 12 inch square. Now keep in mind, you do not have to type in the zero zero for the coordinates. You can just click anywhere and create a rectangle. That's fine. Uh, you also don't need to type in dimensions. You can just make a lot 
lot of rectangles. So uh, while we're looking at curves, there's a couple things to keep in mind. You wanna make sure that when you are drawing a curve that it's planar. And what I mean by that is that when you look in the perspective view, it's in one plane. Sometimes what can happen is you can start drawing and let's say you snap to a certain edge. You can start drawing in a different plane. And unless you're trying to do that, uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. Luckily, if you end up doing that, you can select that curve and use a command called project to C plane. And the C plane is this plane here, the zero plane. And you can always come back and change that C plane. What's cool about this command is it works similarly in the front view or back view. So if I have the front view selected and I type in project to C plane, I hit delete, yes, uh, then it will be referencing uh, the C plane for the front view. So just keep that in mind. And then just some navigation tips. Uh, here. So the first thing to know is what's really helpful is a, first of all, if you are in top view to hit the right view and that will help you pan. And if you're in perspective, if you hit control right click, sorry, if you hit shift right click, then you can pan in perspective, shift right click, control right click, you can zoom in and out. So you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Sometimes you have more control if you drag and use that control right click and you'll just start getting used to using, uh, just using the, 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 the mouse and, and using both those commands. So just take a second to just get used to how this thing navigates, that it's the right button that you're scrolling with and that you're going in and out with the uh, zoom button or the scroll wheel. If your zoom does get really messed up, for instance, if I made a huge square here and, and then I'm navigating around that square, sometimes if I'm zoomed in, you'll notice it's hard to find how I'm working, see how it's orbiting around the thing that I have selected. If you ever wanna reset that, you can select the line work and come up here and it's zoom selected. And now when you scroll around it, you'll notice that it's using that gumball to uh, set everything essentially. That's what it's orbiting around. So just a good thing to keep in mind. The next thing in terms of navigation too, or just how to move geometry, some basics is I have this gumball selected and I can use these arrows to move geometry, which is really cool, really fast way to move geometry around. What you'll notice too, and I'll cover this in other videos as well, uh, is that there will be this circle that you can select and then extrude that. And you'll see that the curve is extruded. And then if you wanted to make that solid, you would type in cap and then it would be solid. You have a solid object. So later on in a couple of videos, we'll get more into uh, what you can do once it's extruded. Now, also what you can do here is scale. So you can select these square buttons and you can scale your object really quickly using the, uh, the gumball. And then what's fun about the gumball is you can also use it to rotate. And if you press shift, it will uh, lock into uh, specific spots. You can scale, you can make different um, options, settings here if you hit the settings button. And then also you'll notice this is in red and it will rotate it in that direction or if it's blue, it will rotate it in this direction. So just some, some real basics uh, to really get into the navigation. And then let's go back to the line work. Let's make a rectangle. And something to know about Rhino is that it really likes, it really likes line work. It works similar to AutoCAD it really preferences using line work. And so a lot of the times you're first drafting the lines and then extruding that information. The more that you know upfront of what you want, the easier it is to first draft that in the line work 
uh, instead of first, for instance, making an extru extrusion and then trying to edit that extrusion, there's so many ways to edit poly surfaces. What's that's that solid piece, but it's it's important to remember that once you have like let's type in extrude curve, that's what you do to make something solid. It's important to remember that once you have it as the solid object there are a million ways that you can edit this object, but generally speaking, it's easier to first create the line work that you want as much as you know. You might not know everything, but as much as you know, and then extrude that information. And then maybe later on you do specific operations. So, so just keep in mind that Rhino really preferences actually using a lot of the line work uh, and then extruding that information. Uh, so unlike SketchUp, which is really it's all in perspective and you're always extruding and pushing and pulling in SketchUp. Here, you have the capability to do that. But if you know, let's say for instance, I know I want this box to have a bit of a chamfer. There's a way to chamfer in Rhino, that's fine. You can do that, but it would actually be easier if you did that in Rhino. So for instance, what I just did was I had a rectangle and then I drew a curve, which everything is considered a curve and then hit control T that's trim uh, and then trim that line work. And then what you wanna keep in mind with Rhino is you need to make sure that you're, especially when you wanna extrude that information, you have to make sure that you join. So this is another command once you have multiple lines, you need to join them together. And then I would select this and hit extrude curve and then extrude that. And you would see I would have a chamfer. Now, yes, you could make a solid and then use the curve to trim that. So if I have a curve here, I can use this and do control T in top view and then trim a solid and then you'll notice that it's now open and then I would just hit cap but it's just generally speaking it's easier to first model things in curves and then extrude them that's really some of the basics uh, another thing to keep in mind just where things are and you know I don't want to get too complicated in this first se section if you just master uh, some of those those tools just experiment and draw draw some things uh, try to draw your chair or emulate something that's in your environment, like your desk or a speaker or something, and just try to draw that. Uh, but when you do that, first, I want to mention some, some very important things here on this left side. So again, let's make a rectangle. If I select this rectangle, you'll notice that the object comes up and it will tell you information. So for instance, this says closed curve. So this is a closed curve. Uh, and you can make a bunch of different settings based on that. You can change the color, you can change the line type, you can change the print width, uh, the you know the heaviness of the line work, um, and you can keep going down this line and keep giving it multi a lot of different information. Uh, here on this little cake thing, there's all the various layers, and if you have if you select and check one of those layers, then you're actually working in that layer. And so for instance, if I have layer one zero and I draft a line, because this layer is set to red, when I draft a line, it will be in red. And I can right click, set properties, and there's a bunch of stuff that I can set based on uh, this layer. So this is a really nice way to work. You're not working in groups as you would be in SketchUp. You're working in layers and joining information uh, with curves. So just keep in mind that it's very uh, much layer based and you need to make sure that you keep your layers uh, nice and organized. Once you have a more, a bigger complex project, you might have 20 layers and you might have uh, subgroups and sub layers and they're all have various line works and various functions that you can turn off and on, which brings me to this next point, which is this light bulb, which turns off and on that layer, pretty neat. And then there's some ver uh, various other things like materials that we'll get on into later on. Um, but just make sure that you that you have this panel up here. It's really helpful. 
and uh, just keep that in mind. The last thing before I end this video to opening Rhino for the first time uh, is that always remember that whenever you type in a command, so if I hit extrude curve, you'll notice it's always giving me options for how I want to output this. So for instance, I could say, no, I don't want this geometry solid and I would select that and then I would click and then I don't have solid geometry. So just keep in mind for every single command that you type into the command line, you're gonna get multiple options. And oh yes, I forgot to finish explaining the O snap and the smart track. Uh, how the O snap works is if I hover over something, it, you'll see it'll say near or it'll say mid and it's snapping to those correspondence. So if I hit center, then I could snap to the center point of that and use that as a reference to draft or move an object. The smart track works like if I have a start of a polyline and I hover over something, it will turn white. And now if I drag vertically, it will lock that into place. And let's say I want this to also line up with something corresponding to that. And then I can use both those points as a reference. So it can come in, it really can come in handy. So for instance, like I'm gonna lock this in place there, come up, lock it into place here. Now it's gonna set that two points, snap to that point, and then I can draw something like that. So that's a really helpful thing to have on, which is the smart track. Uh, typically I don't like to have center on because when I do have it selected, it's always snapping to it. And so I usually just have that off and it's nice to be able to snap to endpoints or to midpoints. And if not, you can just turn it off and then now you can't snap to anything. Uh, there's also this grid snap, which you could take advantage of. And that really just means that everything has to fall onto a grid point. So you could set up your grids and uh, base everything off of uh, the grid. Next thing I'd like to cover is just moving objects. So we talked about moving it with the gumball. Another way that you could move it is if you hold and select, then you can move it. And again, it will use that smart tracking. So hold it and then hit. Or if you can't, if you don't remember to do that, you can always come in here and type move, select an object. See, it tells you select an object, select this, hit space bar, and then you can move the object. Okay, so that's it for right now. And I really hope this was a nice introduction into Rhino. And I really hope that you enjoy learning this really awesome tool. And let me know if you have any issues getting this started. And I'm happy to help any way that I can. Awesome. Have a good day.